you so much for joining me. So before we talk about your $45 million in funds, uh, tell us how you got involved with cancer research and with Rice University. So yeah, thank you for having me on here. Um, my lab has been working on um, cancer now for um, almost seven years now. Um, we have a big team of researchers who are um, based in Houston, but also at institutions around the country, where uh, for several years now, we've been working on developing novel technologies that can uh, facilitate the production of therapeutics in the patient's own body. We've been developing these miniature bioreactors that could be implanted and um, could produce uh, immunotherapies that um, can be uh, effective in treating cancer, but are often uh, difficult to administer because they're too toxic um, mm -hmm. and it's really difficult to get dosing right. So uh, we're really excited to receive this funding from ARPA-H. It's a new uh, government agency that's really uh, been launched to facilitate uh, really development of breakthrough technologies that could have transformative uh, effects on the management of many diseases uh, with, with uh, cancer included as one of them. But going back to the, the implant, can you in layman's terms explain the sense and respond implant tech? How would that help patients? So, um, you know, some of your viewers may be familiar with um, uh, glucose sensors that right. diabetics use. Mm -hmm. And so the way that that technology works is there's embedded sensors uh, within those devices that allow you to get uh, measurements, accurate measurements of what the glucose levels are. Now, interestingly, with immunotherapy, there are other relevant biomarkers that are important. So similar to how a diabetic manages its uh, uh, their blood glucose by administering just the right amount of insulin, um, such a technology is necessary for cancer immunotherapy as well. And so we're leveraging um, the same principles. We're engineering these uh, bioelectronic sensors that can track biomarkers that would predict um, if the therapy is working um, and whether we're about to, to reach the toxicity threshold. And then um, the same device actually has um, the ability to produce the therapies on site. So what's exciting about okay. this uh, effort is that, you know, if we're successful, we will have built a device which could, which is pretty small. It's, um, we're talking about something that's uh, several millimeters wide and several centimeters long. It's a rod shaped device that would be Im implanted um, near the cancer. We're particularly focused on cancers that affect the abdominal cavity um, and then this device would sit there, um, and you can see it on the screen now, that's a prototype mm -hmm. of the device. It would sit there and has onboard sensors that in real time tracks um, how the therapy is working and makes adjustments to the therapy. So, so let, me, let me see if I understand this right. What you're talking about, is it monitoring the cancer, which right now people have to get blood work for, send it off to a lab, you've got to get scans. These are things that take time, but really this could do it more uh, instantaneously and then also be delivering the drugs that are needed to course correct. Is that right? Yeah, cancer therapy today is largely, uh, unfortunately, treated like a static disease, which is not the case. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, unfortunately, p p patients that are undergoing treatment, they will receive a therapy and then usually have to wait maybe four to six weeks before they get a CT scan to see if the therapy is effective or not. And in that time, you know, if you're on the wrong therapy, you've lost a significant amount of time. Mm -hmm. The tumor may have grown pretty substantially and will just become that much harder to uh, change course. But with an implant like this, because of the ability to in real time monitor whether the therapy is working and actually get, provide the clinician with the ability to change the dosing and also the type of therapy within the device, this could be really transformative. Uh, for patients, um, and it really reflects the dynamic. It's a it's a technology that actually addresses the dynamic nature of the disease, mm -hmm. and um, enables that level of control necessary to effectively eliminate the effectively and safely eliminate the cancer. And you guys are saying that this could slash cancer deaths by fifty percent. Where are you getting that number? What, what, how how is that estimation coming about? Well, that, of course, that's a very um, uh, aspirational goal. But the reason why we say that is because 
um, you know, immunotherapy does work today in a subset of patients. Mm -hmm. You know, anywhere from five to 15% of patients with solid tumor uh, see um, significant benefits from immun immunotherapy. But the challenge is um, Who for, it doesn't work to, for. to get that to 50% of the tumors, which is theoretically the amount of cancers that should respond to immunotherapy, there needs to be um, a better activation of the immune system, which is quite heterogeneous from patient to patient. So our hypothesis is that by uh, enabling that fine-tuned regulation, the best spoke patient-specific uh, regulation of delivery, then we could have that type of an impact on cancer therapy. And how long would it be until this can actually get into the arms of patients or into the site of, of the cancer for patients? How long do you expect yeah. your research so, to last? Um, you know, that's what's great about this ARPA-H um, um, funding is that we now have the runway to go all the way from where we are today, which is prototypes in the lab, to first in human clinical trials within uh, the next four years. And um, we have a large team of 19 investigators from across the com country. This involves researchers at Rice, as well as MD Anderson, University of Houston. Um, we have Carnegie Mellon University, Johns Hopkins, Stanford, Georgia Tech, Northwestern. So there's a large group of people, um, and this effort is being led by Rice, but we have a large team that's hyper-focused on this mission, and uh, we have sufficient resources to really tackle this problem of building such a device, which is urgently needed in the clinic. All right, well, congratulations to you and to all of the researchers taking part in this.